Voltage-gated calcium channels VGCCs, also known as voltage-dependent calcium channels VDCCs, are a group of voltage-gated ion channels found in the membrane of excitable cells e.g., muscle, glial cells, neurons, etc., with a permeability to the calcium ion Ca2+. These channels are slightly permeable to sodium ions, so they are also called Ca2 plus Na plus channels, but their permeability to calcium is about 1,000-fold greater than to sodium under normal physiological conditions. At physiologic or resting membrane potential, VGCCs are normally closed. They are activated, i.e., opened, at depolarized membrane potentials and this is the source of the voltage-gated Epithet. The concentration of calcium Ca2 plus ions, is normally several thousand times higher outside the cell than inside. Activation of particular VGCCs allows Ca2 plus to rush into the cell, which, depending on the cell type, results in activation of calcium-sensitive potassium channels, muscular contraction, excitation of neurons, upregulation of gene expression, or release of hormones or neurotransmitters. VGCCs have been immunolocalized in the zona glomerulosa of normal and hyperplastic human adrenal, as well as in aldosterone-producing adenoma APA, and in the latter T-type VGCCs correlated with plasma aldosterone levels of patients. Excessive activation of VGCCs is a major component of excitotoxicity, as severely elevated levels of intracellular calcium activates enzymes which, at high enough levels, can degrade essential cellular structures. Structure Voltage-gated calcium channels are formed as a complex of several different subunits, alpha-1, alpha-2-delta, beta-1-4, and gamma. The alpha-1 subunit forms the ion conducting pore while the associated subunits have several functions including modulation of gating. Channel subunits there are several different kinds of high-voltage gated calcium channels HVGCCs. They are structurally homologous among varying types, they are all similar, but not structurally identical. In the laboratory, it is possible to tell them apart by studying their physiological roles and or inhibition by specific toxins. High voltage gated calcium channels include the neural N type channel blocked by omega conotoxin GVIA, the R type channel, R stands for resistant to the other blockers and toxins, except SNX 482, involved in poorly defined processes in the brain, the closely related P, Q type channel blocked by omega agatoxins, and the dihydropyridine sensitive L type channels responsible for excitation contraction coupling of skeletal, smooth, and cardiac muscle and for hormone secretion in endocrine cells. Alpha-1 subunit The alpha-1 subunit pore approximately 190 kDa in molecular mass is the primary subunit necessary for channel functioning in the HVGCC, and consists of the characteristic four homologous IIV domains containing six transmembrane alpha helices each. The alpha-1 subunit forms the Ca2 plus selective pore, which contains voltage-sensing machinery and the drug toxin binding sites. A total of 10 alpha-1 subunits that have been identified in humans, alpha-1 subunit contains four homologous domains, labeled IIV, each containing six transmembrane helices S1-S6. This arrangement is analogous to a homo-tetramer formed by single-domain subunits of voltage-gated potassium channels that also each contain 6 TM helices. The four-domain architecture, and several key regulatory sites, such as the EF hand and IQ domain at the C-terminus, is also shared by the voltage-gated sodium channels, which are thought to be evolutionary related to VGCCs. The transmembrane helices from the four domains line up to form the channel proper, S5 and S6 helices are thought to line the inner pore surface, while S14 helices have roles in gating and voltage sensing, S4 in particular. VGCCs are subject to rapid inactivation, which is thought to consist of two components, voltage-gated, VGI, and calcium-gated, CGI. These are distinguished by using either BA2 plus or CA2 plus as the charge carrier in the external recording solution, in vitro. The CGI component is attributed to the binding of the CA2 plus binding signaling protein calmodulin CAM to at least one site on the channel, as CA2 plus null CAM mutants abolish CGI in L-type channels. 
Not all channels exhibit the same regulatory properties and the specific details of these mechanisms are still largely unknown. Alpha-2 Delta subunit The alpha-2 delta gene forms two subunits, alpha-2 and delta, which are both the product of the same gene. They are linked to each other via a disulfide bond and have a combined molecular weight of 170 kDa. The alpha-2 is the extracellular glycosylated subunit that interacts the most with the alpha-1 subunit. The delta subunit has a single transmembrane region with a short intracellular portion, which serves to anchor the protein in the plasma membrane. There are four alpha-2 delta genes. CACNA2D1, CACNA2D1. CACNA2D2, CACNA2D2, CACNA2D3, CACNA2D4. Co-expression of the alpha-2 delta enhances the level of expression of the alpha-1 subunit and causes an increase in current amplitude, faster activation and inactivation kinetics, and a hyperpolarizing shift in the voltage dependence of inactivation. Some of these effects are observed in the absence of the beta subunit, whereas, in other cases, the co-expression of beta is required. The alpha-2 delta-1 and alpha-2 delta-2 subunits are the binding site for gabapentinoids. This drug class includes two anticonvulsant drugs, gabapentin, neurontin, and pregabalin, lyrica, that also find use in treating chronic neuropathic pain. The alpha-2 delta subunit is also a binding site of the central depressant and anxiolytic drug phenobut, in addition to actions at other targets. Beta subunit The intracellular beta subunit 55 kDa is an intracellular MAGUK-like protein, membrane-associated guanylate kinase, containing a guanylate kinase GK, domain and an SH3 SRC homology 3 domain. The guanylate kinase domain of the beta subunit binds to the alpha-1 subunit I2 cytoplasmic loop and regulates HVGCC activity. There are four known genes for the beta subunit. CACNB1, CACNB1, CACNB2, CACNB2, CACNB3, CACNB3. CACNB4, CACNB4, it is hypothesized that the cytosolic beta subunit has a major role in stabilizing the final alpha-1 subunit conformation and delivering it to the cell membrane by its ability to mask an endoplasmic reticulum retention signal in the alpha-1 subunit. The endoplasmic retention break is contained in the I2 loop in the alpha-1 subunit that becomes masked when the beta subunit binds. Therefore, the beta subunit functions initially to regulate the current density by controlling the amount of alpha-1 subunit expressed at the cell membrane. In addition to this trafficking role, the beta subunit has the added important functions of regulating the activation and inactivation kinetics, and hyperpolarizing the voltage dependence for activation of the alpha-1 subunit pore, so that more current passes for smaller depolarizations. The beta subunit has effects on the kinetics of the cardiac alpha-1C and xenopus levis oocytes co-expressed with beta subunits. The beta subunit acts as an important modulator of channel electrophysiological properties. Until very recently, the interaction between a highly conserved 18 amino acid region on the alpha-1 subunit intracellular linker between domains I and II, the alpha interaction domain, AID, and a region on the GK domain of the beta subunit, alpha interaction domain binding pocket, was thought to be solely responsible for the regulatory effects by the beta subunit. Recently, it has been discovered that the SH3 domain of the beta subunit also gives added regulatory effects on channel function, opening the possibility of the beta subunit having multiple regulatory interactions with the alpha-1 subunit pore. Furthermore, the aid sequence does not appear to contain an endoplasmic reticulum retention signal, and this may be located in other regions of the I2 alpha-1 subunit linker. Gamma subunit the gamma-1 subunit is known to be associated with skeletal muscle VGCC complexes, but the evidence is inconclusive regarding other subtypes of calcium channel. 
The gamma-1 subunit glycoprotein 33 KDA is composed of four transmembrane-spanning helices. The gamma-1 subunit does not affect trafficking and, for the most part, is not required to regulate the channel complex. However, gamma-2, gamma-3, gamma-4 and gamma-8 are also associated with AMPA glutamate receptors. There are eight genes for gamma subunits. Gamma-1, CACNG1 Gamma-2, CACNG2 Gamma-3, CACNG3 Gamma-4, CACNG4 CACNG5 CACNG6 CACNG7, and CACNG8 Muscle physiology When a smooth muscle cell is depolarized, it causes opening of the voltage-gated L-type calcium channels. Depolarization may be brought about by stretching of the cell, agonist binding its G-protein coupled receptor, GPCR, or autonomic nervous system stimulation. Opening of the L-type calcium channel causes influx of extracellular Ca2+, which then binds calmodulin. The activated calmodulin molecule activates myosin light chain kinase MLCK, which phosphorylates the myosin in thick filaments. Phosphorylated myosin is able to form crossbridges with actin-thin filaments, and the smooth muscle fiber i.e., cell, contracts via the sliding filament mechanism. See reference for an illustration of the signaling cascade involving L-type calcium channels in smooth muscle. L-type calcium channels are also enriched in the T-tubules of striated muscle cells, i.e., skeletal and cardiac myofibers. When these cells are depolarized, the L-type calcium channels open as in smooth muscle. In skeletal muscle, the actual opening of the channel, which is mechanically gated to a calcium release channel, aka ryanodyne receptor, or RYR, in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, senior, causes opening of the RYR. In cardiac muscle, opening of the L-type calcium channel permits influx of calcium into the cell. The calcium binds to the calcium release channels RYRs, in the senior, opening them. This phenomenon is called calcium-induced calcium release, or CICR. However the RYRs are opened, either through mechanical gating or CICR. Ca2 plus is released from the senior and is able to bind to troponin C on the actin filaments. The muscles then contract through the sliding filament mechanism, causing shortening of sarcomeres and muscle contraction. Changes in expression during development Early in development, there is a high amount of expression of T-type calcium channels. During maturation of the nervous system, the expression of N or L-type currents becomes more prominent. As a result, mature neurons express more calcium channels that will only be activated when the cell is significantly depolarized. The different expression levels of low voltage activated LVA and high voltage activated HVA channels can also play an important role in neuronal differentiation. In developing xenopus spinal neurons, LVA calcium channels carry a spontaneous calcium transient that may be necessary for the neuron to adopt a GABAergic phenotype as well as process outgrowth. Clinical significance Voltage-gated calcium channels antibodies are associated with Lambert-Eden myasthenic syndrome and have also been implicated in perineoplastic cerebellar degeneration. See also Glutamate receptors Inositol triphosphate receptor Ion channels NMDA receptors References External links Andrea Welling, Voltage Dependent Calcium Channels, BIOTREND Reviews No. 04, January 2009, 2009 BIOTREND Chemicals AG Voltage Gated Ion Channels IUPHAR Database of Receptors and Ion Channels International Union of Basic and Clinical Pharmacology
Calcium Plus Channels at the U.S. National Library of Medicine Medical Subject Headings, MESH.